All right. So when last we left our intrepid adventurers, as I recall, uh, it started. Uh, we had just tried getting Hank's anger back, and that didn't work. And then the cheese guy came, and we talked to the cheese merchant. Uh, and everyone was freaking and out. Everyone was, and was, was like, like, "Yeah, there's houses disappearing, and people don't think that they've disappeared." And like, are we going crazy? We must be going crazy. That's the and, and there was lots of awesome theories floating around, Wait. like, "Oh, you know, this, this is a ghost house," or everyone in in the town is are ghosts, or yeah. like, it was just really kind of fun listening yeah. to everyone. Maybe we're the ghosts theorizing of what's going on. Yeah. I wish my players did that. It, it was just, it was really fun because like they kept tossing these out, the, these theories out there, and I'm just silent. Yeah. I, I think they were hoping I'd give them some kind of hint, yeah. but no. So uh, I think the first thing we did after we sort of stopped flailing wildly uh, was we went to go and see Brooke again, right? Did you see? Him? We we headed back into town. Yes, you're right. You did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because there was some de- you were debating like, you know, there's some people who are like, let's just screw it, let's leave, screw it, let's burn this place down, yeah. let's go in and investigate. There was a lot yeah. of debate, but and then yeah, you decided to go check on Brooke. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we went over to the house. Uh, Mrs. Butler was the old lady that we had left Brooke with. Um, and we'd already sort of considered her a bit of a creepy person because she offered us tea. Yeah, there was nothing um, creepy about her, but the whole party was freaking out. Well, the fact that she was oh, yeah. so insistent. But okay. she was just really nice, right? Okay. That's she very suspicious. An NPC actively trying to make the PC's lives better? She must be up to something. Yeah. Something was weird. She just um, she just saw your your you know you guys want to get going and she's like no 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 just have some tea it's yeah. not going to take any time at all yeah, and they're like you want to drink tea <laughs> must be something suspicious yeah. we back to that lady yeah. again well yeah we came back we're we're left with. Yeah. yeah so they went back to talk yeah. to her. Um, and oh sorry you that uh, so they okay. they said uh, so they came through and was like oh okay is Brooke still here and she said yeah of course she's still here she's just up in her room. And and the party was like, her room? What? Yeah. yeah, up in her room. But what do you mean? She has a she has a room? Yeah. yeah of course she has a room. It's you know she you know she lives here ever since ever you know since her, her ever since her parents died, died when she, she was, was a baby. baby and yeah. I never had any you know I was never married and I never had any kids or grandkids so I took her in. Yeah. And she was a little baby and, she, and she's up in her room. Yeah. So yeah, history's changed again. So the party was started freaking out from that. Uh, well, I don't know if it's so much freaking out as well. Yeah, it's freaking out. Did you get Brooke eventually? I mean, in the in the beginning, not eventually. In the beginning, where did you get her? Oh, she she had come running up to the party, um, crying and panicking because her her dad had not her dad had gone to work and not come home. Oh. And when she talked to the other people around the town, they were like, she never had a dad. She lives. She's an orphan who lives at the orphanage. She's what started yeah. all of this. Yep. Yeah. I guess that might mean that the orphanage disappeared and then history needed to re-edit itself so that she'd been living somewhere all that time and put her with Mrs. Butler. Well, Mrs. Butler did say that the, the town was too small for an orphanage. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah, I didn't remember that. But okay. I just didn't know comment. Yeah, so the orphanage disappeared and edited and history changed so that she'd lived with Butler the whole time. Um, which I guess means we're done with her because now she has a family of her own. Mm-hmm. Yay? But so the party uh, yeah, we start- <laughs> the party freaked out Mrs. Butler, which, which they tend to do because well, we started rampaging around her house like trying to find Brooke and find stuff. We saw like there were portraits on the wall of Mrs. Butler's family that she said she'd never had. Yeah, husband uh, and kids and grandkids. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and we go up to, to Brooke and, and we're all like, you know, you didn't live here before. Yeah, and, and so and, and you know, they you know, Mrs. Butler was like, No, it's always been this way, but then yeah. they showed her the pictures on her wall yeah. of her family and just like as anyone would react like you know they assume, she assume the, the party has got to be messing with her like to, they've got to have planted it or something right like yeah. that's it's so she, she's sense. you know she she really started freaking out but she's a nice lady so she's like I'm going to have to ask you to leave please yeah. I, then, I don't want you around Brooke because I think you're crazy you're, you're up to something yeah. well I mean we're already a bizarre menagerie but I guess this is a mongrel folk town so that's <coughs> that, yeah they're all bizarre yeah. menageries yeah yeah. This is one of the few places in the world where, where this party actually is not worth a second glance. 
Uh, anyway, so eventually we left after checking up on Brooke and making sure she was all right, if confused. Um, and also we checked up on Aurora's cat. Um, pars- parsley? Parsnip? Parsnip. Although, parsnip. although Croce started calling her, 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 par- uh, her Parsley and then Aurora started calling her Parsley. Okay. And she's like, cat's name's evolved His over time. changed again! Ah! Pretty soon we're always going to have had a unit in the party and, and serendipity will have been some outsider or something. Anyway. Um, so... We, uh, after that, we have to decide what to do. Cricket suggests we go, uh, Cricket suggests we go to the town hall, uh, and check out, like, uh, property deeds and, and birth records and stuff like that to see whether there's, you know, remaining evidence of how big this town used to be and all that kind of stuff. Or maybe figure something maybe out for that. that. Uh, what were the other suggestions? Um... Was there anything else other than go back to the Kelly house? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, I remember a bunch of suggestions were cast out there. But ultimately, you guys went back to the Yeah, house, we so. did ultimately go back to the Kelly house. I'm something that happened back. on the way to Mrs. Butler. That You know that old guy who oh. had been sitting on his porch being like, yeah, things have sure changed around here. Yeah. Uh, when he went back to his house, it, there, there was no house there. It was just like, it was Some like the lumber. ruined remnants of like a star It was a bunch of lumber, basically. Yeah. And he was gone. Anyway, after that, we went back to the Kelly house. And when we got there... Uh, the fence and the garden were gone, like they'd never been. It was just like a vacant lot type thing, but the house was still there. Uh, it was looking, was it looking It was starting to flicker. Oh, it wasn't yes, dilapidated, it but it was starting to it flicker starting a little flicker. bit. Right. Because I remember you guys like, yeah, we're going to go in there, right? Yeah. Because everyone wants to go in there, but... It's like, yeah, okay, that was starting to flicker out of existence. Let's go on in. Um, so we go inside. Uh, and we check out the remaining ground floor rooms that we hadn't checked out yet. There was a pantry and a kitchen. Uh, and I don't think there was anything of note in the pantry and the kitchen. Yeah, just the kitchen had, uh, had the remains of a meal that had been prepared and was rotting yeah. for like three days. And the food was all perfectly good in the pantry. Yeah. But I don't think we ate any of the ghost food, though, because that would have been a good idea. Um, so we climbed the stairs to go and look at the second floor of the house. Uh, there were two rooms up there. Uh, the first room was, I think, like the master bedroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there was a bed, and on the table, the end tables next to the beds, uh, to the bed, uh, there were uh, wedding rings uh, for the Mr. and Mrs. Uh, that had just been, like, placed on the, the end tables. Uh, and we didn't steal them. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Like you know, they, they found these wedding rings and they were like, oh, disturbed. And I was like, you know, these are worth 70 gold each. And they're like, we're not taking the, the wedding rings. Which I knew they wouldn't, but... <laughs> yeah. This, this party's going to be very treasure-free. <laughs> you you are like, it doesn't belong sell them. to us. You take them, they're going to come up at some point. Uh, the closet had yeah. uh, men's and women's clothing in it as well. Which we didn't take. They <laughs> could be super fancy. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so then we open the door to the next room. Now let me see. It was, we were sort of all cramming in the well, door. Remember, Croesus opened. So I think Croesus opened it, but you had said, "I ready in action that if anyone opens the door, I yeah. run in front and open it instead." Yes. Yes. So Cr- Cr- Cricket was the first in there. Yes, because <laughs> Cricket Cricket keeps trying to be the first one into rooms in case some, there's something horrible and, and deadly in there. Uh, and everyone else is like running out ahead, and so I finally I ready to action. I'm gonna do this. Uh, so Croesus goes to open a door, and Cricket just sort of like slides in there and opens the door and steps in first. Uh, the next room over was a bedroom with bunk bed. Um, and now, who saw what? Uh, did Cricket... In, Cricket saw. Cricket saw, and I think Aurora also saw? Yes, later. But originally, Cricket and Croesus went in there. And Cricket, Cricket saw, yeah, the room with bunk beds. There was, like, a 13-year-old boy and a 15-year-old boy. One was sitting on the bunk, one sitting at his desk. And they're like, look at, them, look at Cricket, like, hi, what are you doing here? And so Cricket apologized profusely. It was like, well, I'm so sorry to intrude. So and and, and Croesus, Croesus didn't see anything. He saw an empty room. And was, yeah, he was very confused. Who were you talking? Did he even see a furniture? No, just, just an, em- an empty just room. Just a yeah. empty room. And he was asking, you know, yeah. who were you talking to? And yeah. Everyone sort of filed in the room, and the only other person who saw anything was Aurora. Crooked and Aurora could see the two yeah. boys. Everyone else. Completely empty room. 
so we tried doing diplomacy. Unfortunately, the two diplomatic powerhouses were the ones who could see them, mm-hmm. which uh, was good because they were, you know, they, they burst into their room. Yeah, and like, you know, and <laughs> what what are you doing here? Well, we're we're investigating, you know, what's going on in this house because we met Brooke. And they're like, Brooke, what, you know, what, what are you what are you doing with our sister? And like, they're yeah. getting all agitated yeah. because these random people came into their room and started saying something about investigating the house because yeah. of Brooke. And so we, uh, Aurora and Cricket, managed to keep things from bursting into combat. Um, well, presumably they were going to go all ghosts and make all the furniture attack us again or something. You know, or our clothing would start strangling us or something ridiculous. Um, but they were pretty, um, you know, um, uh, aggressive. So even though we... we stayed out of the fight, it was all like, yeah, okay, we're backing off, we're backing out of the room. Uh, and Cricket and Aurora managed to sort of convince everyone to back out of the room. Uh, now, what happened immediately after that? That was... That was when the house started the house, collapsing. Yeah, things started going weird. Yeah, we got, it, we, got it, we got it, we got it, we got it into the hallway. Well, not really the hallway, Everything it's like a balcony. Fine until the house collapsed. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of a balcony thing. We got out onto that, uh, I think we closed the door, and then... Yeah, and the balcony started slanting down, the wall started t- tilting, like, it wasn't, like, falling apart, it was, like, collapsing like a, like a yeah. can being crushed, so the, the house started yeah. collapsing on them, and everyone started... Running, running and down. stuff, but Aurora wanted to open the door where the boys were to see if they were okay. Right. So she opened the door by Cricket Guardian's intercession. So, oh, because no, because what happened she, was she opened the door, uh, and inside the room is like this howling maelstrom of madness type thing, uh, and the two boys are there and sort of caught in it, and they're like screaming, and, and it's all really horrible and something like there's like this some sort of ghost wind or something blasting through. Yeah. Basically, yeah, like the sort of pillar of weirdness ripping yeah, through them, and they're and screaming. They're like, and and I, yeah. so I attacked with a will attack because yeah, it was like Aurora it was going to go in there because that sight was going to mess with her mind. Her cricket guardians intercepted. Yes. So she jumped in front and saw it and said, "Yeah." Aurora only caught a glimpse of of the horror, but, but yeah. uh, um, so cricket got hit. Uh, and what did that do? That was well. That that was it. It, it did. It did some stuff that... It, like, dazed me or something, or... Um, it didn't actually daze you. It, it had to do... Uh, it, it took away uh, some of your, like, memory, but that was further made worse, so it was... I, the thing is, it made me lose, like, a turn or something, if I remember correctly. No, just because Aurora... Cause everyone, Aurora went, every, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Because Cricket was stuck up there, and Aurora went running down. That's true. Yeah, so, I think that might have just been a mistake on my part. Oh, yeah, I guess you were looking at that, right? And everyone else ran, and you were stuck looking at that yeah. for a turn. Yeah, so everyone else is running down the stairs and trying to get out of the, the crumpling, collapsing house. Uh, and Cricket got stuck uh, for a round. Uh, and then when the next round began... Um, everyone's like piling out the front door and I'm a whole round behind Uh, and so I take a look at the map and it looks like the fastest way out of the house uh, is actually to run into the room with the two boys and jump out the window Uh, that's it's that I can do that in one round Uh, but the house is like crumpling up so the window is, is crumpling up as well uh, so I run out the window and I roll to jump through the window and I flub the acrobatics check. Uh, and so I like hit the wall beside the window. Uh, and so then I try again uh, and I manage to get through the window, but sort of like it catches stuff as I go through. There's a, there's a point where where cricket should have been crushed by the house, but instead she sort of like pops into this other. I don't know, feeling of like weird yeah. nothingness, badness, suckiness, and yeah. then she gets, and then she finally gets out the window and like lands on the ground. Yeah, yeah she, she didn't. I didn't take any anything, damage. But. Yeah, I did. I did the acrobatic check on the landing, uh, but uh, due to that, uh, Cricket lost basically pretty much all her memories. Mm. It, it nice. like super disoriented her. So Cricket lost all of her abilities except for one at will. 
uh, and was really out of it because she didn't remember much of anything. She remembered basically Temple of Freedom and then what else did you say? Is this like you you kind of know who these people are? Yeah. And as it came out, like if if you if Cricket was reminded of something, she'd be like, oh yeah, you know, like mm. you know. Yeah. Yeah, you had know. all. And so Serendipity was immediately like she doesn't remember that I don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not actually true, I don't think. Shannon might have been saying that. Yeah, Shannon said that, but Yeah, Shannon said that, but then she's like and then she was like, but serendipity is not evil. I'm not sure if that's about Shannon if, uh, if she was evil. But, but serendipity also uh, got caught in the house too, just not as bad. Yeah. Because she got she got just barely caught as she was going out the door. She wasn't quite fast enough. And so yeah. she she but she she didn't really lose well, Cricket, when she came out, she was at, like, 50% opacity and, like, flickering. Uh, Serendipity was at 90% opacity and flickering a little bit, and she lost her, her best daily. Um, but uh, she quickly returned back to normal opacity, though she didn't have her daily. Um, but... Uh, yeah. So they got out, and when and, and so even though the house was crumpling on the inside, when they got to the outside, they just saw it flickering away, and then it was gone. Yeah. So. So then we had to decide what to do, and Cricket was really helpful with the decision-making process. <laughs> Nothing is wrong here. They, 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 she was perfectly normal. No, basically, the way I was playing her, she was like, she would repeat and agree with anything that was said. <laughs> so, you know, someone would say, we really should do this. And Crick would be like, yeah, we really should do that. And someone would say, no, that's terrible. And Crick would say, no, that's terrible. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was really starting to drive Aurora nuts. Because she's been all big about cricket standing up for herself and whatnot. Yeah. So Aurora was kind of going a little bit, you know, like, ah! at cricket. That was fun. Is that where you guys left it? No. No, we're like halfway through. And Cricket was also sort of harmed emotionally, like, also also uh, serendipity to a le- lesser degree. Like, I, I said, you know, you feel sort of like a sort of an emotionless emptiness in your heart. Like, it's just very... Um, uh, am I? Yeah. Am I? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, after that, we're like, okay, so now what do we do? We don't go into that house again. It actually fully disappeared, right? Fully disappeared. Yeah. It was just a field... Um, yeah, we so we started heading back towards what was left in town. And this is when we met that, uh, that guy, right? Uh, yes, well, actually, at that point, you were heading back to the town square, town hall area. Yeah. And you noticed that, the you know, before the forest had been a fair ways back from the town, but now it was, like, into the town. Yeah. And, in fact, the whole eastern part of the town was basically forest now, no. including the area where the town hall and the town square was. So that you, you went to where the town square was, and you're in the forest, and you're discussing what to do on the edge of the forest, and then they heard someone... Um, Sorry, sobbing in the in the trees. So they went to investigate, and uh, as they were walking towards them, they saw Jorgensen, that guy that had wanted to go in the haunted house with them, but Hank had threatened and said, if you, if you try to come with us, I'll kill you, because he didn't want him to get killed. And he saw the party, he just bolted into the trees, <laughs> freaked out. Aurora, everyone gave chase, yeah. and Aurora somehow, like, won the, the endurance check <laughs> and caught him and, and calmed him down. You know, and was like, we're not here to hurt you. And, and, he, and he was like, what do you mean you're not here to hurt me? You just threatened me in the street to kill me for no reason earlier. He and, didn't remember the house. Yeah, like, but you wanted to go into the haunted house. What haunted house are you talking about? You just came up in the street and said, I'm going to kill you if you don't, you know, leave. And, uh... They managed to get him calmed down enough to talk to him, I guess. I don't know if they really didn't learn much of anything, except what we already know, that this place is freaky and horrible and let's go. Maybe yeah. Um... But, but you were already into yeah. the trees at that point, and you they asked you guys asked him um, because the only place you hadn't really been was the sawmill, and you asked you know where's the sawmill, and he was actually kind of useless. Yeah, he was like, why should I tell you? Like, yeah. Oops. One time we actually want to talk with an NPC, and he's useless. <laughs> so for whatever reason, we 
decide ultimately to go to the, the sawmill because it's pretty much the only point of interest left that we haven't checked out. Uh, and the trees seem to be like having their revenge or something, so maybe it has something to do with the sawmill. So we go to the sawmill. Now I'm trying to remember the sequence of events. I don't think we saw it in like non in pristine condition, did we? It was um, no. It, you first got there, and the sawmill. Oh right, there and Dippy caught fire. Okay. But yeah, we got there. Sawmill's all right. Um, and you looked in the windows. And so, I heard it was looking in the windows first. It wasn't Sharon Dippy. It was some, two people looking. Yeah. In. I don't remember who it was. Yeah. Uh, maybe Aurora. At this point, we're probably never going to enter a building without looking at all the windows first <laughs> again. So Aurora looks in the window, and it's like a working sawmill. There's people in there, like, working. Like, it's, it's like, magical, but it's also driven by the water, and they're sawing logs and whatever. Um, Serendipity looks in there, and she sees inside everything's on fire, and, like, oh, there's people on fire burning and screaming and, and dying, and then Serendipity catches on fire. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it, it was just five ongoing damage, save ends, but, you know, oh, it, it was a bit disturbing for the party. I should note, um, Cricket has been calling Serendipity Serendipity ever since she lost yeah. most of her memory. Oh, not the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. We stole it from that. Um, who was it? One of the other players sort of picked up the mantle and started calling her Serendipity Ben Goldstrider more? Aurora. Aurora. Yeah. So that, that was amusing. But anyway, yeah, so serendipity is on fire. Um, and now suddenly the, the whole um, uh, sawmill is like this burnt out room. Hmm. Yeah, they, they, they help serendipity get out on fire and they look back and it's just a burnt room. Yeah. So Aurora goes up to the burnt out ruin and like puts her hand where there's a, a gaping hole to see whether there's still a door there or whether it's visual. And the moment she tries to do that, all these charred skeletons stand up in the ruins and attack us. Oh, and one grabs her. Yeah. So, we, so I finally got to live out my dream. Burning skeletons are one of my favorite enemies. I've never actually thrown them at the party before. Until today. So we had a huge fight with a whole lot of burning skeletons. I think it's all there were like, what, 15 of them or something? There was 18, I think. 18. So, and there was a mix. There were some minions in there. Um, but there were a lot that weren't minions. Yeah, and it ended up being a fairly tactical fight. It was a, sort of an, an area where 4th edition kind of shines. Yeah. There was a lot of, like, orig- initially the there were the types that just ran up and, like, grabbed you. And they came running out as the party retreated from the building. But those mean- guys really sucked because they exploded when they were bloodied and when they were killed. <laughs> and it was a big explosion. Yeah, it was a burst three. So, yeah, they, they came out and they, and finally, you know, they were fighting these guys and doing okay, and then the first one blew up as it got bloodied. I mean, it caught the whole party. And we're like, holy crap, and there's three of these guys. Yeah, that's going to be nasty. Meanwhile, there's a bunch of skeleton archers back in the ruins, and they're shooting us with these flaming arrows that set us on fire with ongoing fire damage. Yeah, and they're just pin cushioning. Like there, well, there's, there was, I think there was five that shot those flaming arrows. There's three of them, three of the melee types. Yeah, three, three of the melee types. No, there was four that shot flaming arrows, four flaming melee, and the rest were just charred skeletons. They weren't actually on fire, so they just shot regular arrows. So they, yeah. And that was, there was like. It's still pretty nasty though. I think there, there were twelve of those or so. There was a lot. And they would they would typically pen cushion a single enemy, so they would focus on whoever was on front and just like hammer them until they went down. Um, so the party was struggling. I'm trying to remember things that particularly happened. Um, I know Hank uh, went to zero twice. Oh, plus they're missing their memories, so they can't use other powers. Well, mm-hmm. only Cricket. I think Serendipity still was missing her daily then. Serendipity yeah. didn't have her daily, and Hank didn't have his daily either. Yeah. And Cricket was missing everything except for one that will. I used, uh, I took, um, what's the push around one? Um, um, staggering note. <laughs> staggering note, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, Kruger made good use of staggering oh, yeah. note that combat. Um, Especially those explodey guys, nice shoving them away. 
Yeah, there was quite a bit of that, like, you know, okay, we'll shove the exploding guy away, and so only Krosis will take the blast, etc. But yeah, Hank, Hank went down. Hank was so close to negative bloody that Robert was starting to think of a new character. But he was brought back. Yeah. Um, yeah, and did Crosses go to zero? I don't think he went to zero, but he was very close. Uh, not not till the end, but well, we can get yeah. to that. Um, yeah, he was, Hank was the one who took the most damage early on because he was near the front, and they would just hammer on one guy. Serendipity went down. Cricket went down at one point. Aurora went down at one point. I don't think Cricket ever went down. Cricket never went down. In fact, I remember being somewhat embarrassed at the end that I had 25 hit points left. <laughs> I was like, you know, sorry guys. Normally I do my best to jump out in front of everything, but it just didn't work out that way. Yeah. And they... I was doing ranged attacks, and I spent most of the combat prone. Yeah. Serendipity spent most of the combat popping minions, especially with like a fireball and stuff, so killing minions. And the rest were just trying to focus on those three guys who would come up and, and grab you with, uh, while they're on fire, because those were the, the real challenging things. In hindsight, I think maybe we should have taken out the archers first. I think so too. Uh, you guys were slowly taking them out, but like, yeah. And those, those guys who shot the flaming arrows, you didn't take them out at all while you were fighting the, the, the melee guys. And um, you know those guys. Every every round, they would. Just, I would just be like, "Okay, are you on fire? No. Okay, he shoots you with an arrow, and it always hit because it was like it was like plus ten versus reflex. Like, and the reflexes of the party are like in the low teens. Right. So every round, I'd be like, "Are you on fire? No. Okay, you're on fire now. Next guy, are you on fire? Yeah. Are you on fire? No. Okay, you're on fire now. So everyone was always on fire all the time." <laughs> Um, but, yeah, Serendipity focused on the archers, but she could only really kill the minions fast enough. The archers had fire resistance, so she was using her fireball for a lot of that, so that didn't really help. Um, she did use, um, what was the other thing she used a bunch? Oh, Hail of... Hail, Hail yes, stones. Hailstones. Yes, that, one, that was pretty good. Um, we managed to get them pumping a bit. And, uh, well, they weren't vulnerable to cold. They were only vulnerable to radiant, and no one does radiant in the party. Yes. Yeah, but at least they weren't resistant. Yeah. So, um, we slowly whittled down... Well, the, uh, Serendipity, you took the minions out... Uh, and then Hank and Croesus did most of the work on those um, grab you fire type brutes. Mm -hmm. I don't know, were they brutes or were they soldiers? I think they were brutes, but, yeah. but they, yeah, they did a pretty good job after the first first time. And well, the first bloodied explosion and the first death explosion, mm -hmm. of keeping them away uh, yeah. from everyone, and just like usually only one person would take the blast when they killed them. Um, and. Uh, was useful in that and also like a lot of people had pushes and stuff so yeah, yeah Cricket was really maneuvering them around a lot that was quite helpful mm. and I almost finally crossed it I almost managed to push one of the flaming skeletons into the stream I wanted to see what would happen then if he'd go out <laughs> but that one I didn't hit Oh, that reminds me. When Serendipity killed the minions with their fireball, because the minions weren't fire resistant, yeah. they flashed for a brief second as, like, some sawmill worker, like, burning to death before they disappeared. Which, and only Serendipity saw that. <laughs> yeah, that seems to actually really disturb Shannon. Yeah. Poor Shannon. <laughs> when go, it was all an illusion. Yeah. You know, people were walking around, and he was with bone fire. Where history's greatest monster. <laughs> Once again, Cricket's not going to have any heroic accomplishments to sing about except rescuing the cat. <laughs> In the end, on the last explodey guy, Grossus attacked him and he used both his. Um, uh, he used both his daily, well, I think, yeah, it was a daily, and he used his cinematic points. 
he had some ability where he could grab a guy and teleport with him. So he teleported with the last exploding guy into the middle of the, of the fire archers and then used him to, uh, to swing around and hit all the fire archers with. So he didn't go off. Yeah. Didn't. It would have been cool, but still, that was pretty awesome. And then everyone's like, oh, that was when I reminded everyone, which I said earlier, the fire archers have an aura around them. If you stand, if you end your turn next to them, you take fire, five fire damage. Yeah. And at which point they're like, Prosus, did you have a plan for uh, standing in the middle of two fire archers? Like, but he did have a plan. Oh, did he? Because he had some, I think it was not Will. Oh, right. No, it was an augment. Yeah, where was, if he did, if he did, he'd do this attack, and the effect was uh, eight fire resistance. Yeah. So he was basically able to stand immune to those guys yeah. and add most great. of their attacks. That fire resistance saved us, I think. Yeah. Because Krosis was able to clean up those archers. Mm. Speaking of cinematic points, uh, Hank also used a cinematic point because he was like down and out and almost dead and surrounded by enemies, and he lost his rage, and then he just started to get kind of mad. And he was just, he regained his rage, yeah. and uh, and so he spent a cinematic point, and he's like, yeah, I gain, regain my rage, and I do my daily ability. And like, yeah, okay, that's perfect use of a cinematic point. So he, he, Hank, Hank got his rage back, and then he... Uh, he, well, he, he did this big, m massive attack and hit all the guys, but none of them died. So, yeah, so, yeah we, we ultimately survived. Mm. Um, Although it was close, because at the end, there was just one fire archer left, and Hank and Croesus were trying to kill him, and he, like, shot, and... Oh, was it? Oh, he shot and took out Hank, and then he shot and took out Croesus, and they both, like, fell to zero hit points. Yeah. And then, but that thing was almost dead. I forget even who killed him. Like, it was, it was like Aurora or something with, like, a crappy shot, or I don't remember yeah. who it was, but... Just, and yeah, in the end, Hank and Croesus were both down. Aurora yeah. was looking pretty bad, too, if I remember correctly. Mm. Everyone, 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 went, everyone dropped to zero hit points in, in the combat, except for Cricket and... Oh, Serendipity never dropped. Yeah. That's what it was. But they were, and we were both hanging back too. It was kind of amusing to consider that Serendipity and Cricket might be the only survivors. Um, I have would, no idea what's going on. <laughs> well, Serendipity did. Uh, sort of. Cricket, Cricket was still out of it. Uh, John later said afterwards that, that he hadn't expected that we would go straight into combat with Cricket still, you know, only down. able to do at will. Yeah. One at will. Yeah. But in retrospect, like they made the perfectly logical move because they're they're scared if they rested, every, like the town's going to be gone or whatever, right? Yeah. So their 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 actions made perfect sense. I just didn't think they'd like go into a potential combat situation with two characters unable to do their best daily and one character unable to do anything except for one at will. And then we fought a lot of skeletons. Yeah. So it was a hard after. What happened after that? The session ended. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I don't know if there was any like <laughs> last capper, like oh, and, and then the dragon shows up or something. I don't think there was. Oh, no, you guys decided to rest. Yeah. Yeah, because you were just totally done. Yeah. That, 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 that was a GM victory battle. You guys were scared, but you still won. Perfect. But um, when you were in the when you were inside the factory, uh, the people inside the factory saw like partial opacity, like a full factory running. But nothing really. Once it was gone, once the battle was done, it was just a burnt out ruin. Um, the other thing this might be interesting is Croesus freaking out because he, he was freaking out that the dream was ending because oh, everything yeah. was disappearing. Yeah. And it's like the dream can't end. I'm not ready for the dream to end. Yeah. And he was really concerned about saving the town <laughs> because he felt like the dream was ending. And of course, Cricket was concerned too because she has no idea what's going on and will believe whatever is told to her at this point. Not the dream. Not the dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Found a way to make cricket more of a doormat. <laughs> mm. Take away her memories. 
Well, and after the extended rest, everyone got to make, well, everyone who'd lost memories and stuff got to make a wisdom save, wisdom check, and Serendipity made it, so she's back to normal. Cricket, however, did not, so she still has only one at will and doesn't really remember anything. Dear Diary, oh dear, we've had quite a day. You know, I'm sure if Adiron was here, he would have said, Aurora, don't go investigate the chart out ruins. But he wasn't, and I was just, I really wanted to see what was happening because Serendipity Van Goldstrider Malora had just been engulfed in flames and we had extinguished her, and I went to see if the door was actually there because when we looked back, it was just all a charred ruin and. It was so strange. This place is so strange. I can't... I'm, I'm kind of worried. What if the whole world has become like this? You know, we assumed that we came upon this strange village where things are disappearing. But what if the whole land has become like this? And we'll go back to places that we knew before and there'll, there'll be nothing left. <sighs> I'm so glad that there's trees. At least, at least the plants aren't disappearing. That would be truly desolate. Oh, what a relieving thought. I'm so glad. But at the same time, I'm very concerned about my friend Cricket. She is acting very strange. Something is wrong. She's acting like she doesn't even know who she is. She she can't remember things. And, and she just keeps falling down and stuff. Oh, I don't know. I'm really worried. I remember, I remember the Temple of Freedom. I remember the first thing I remember. It was so beautiful. I woke up and I was in the Temple of Freedom and the serpent priests were there and they explained to me, they explained to me my whole life. Then Things got a bit hazy. Ah, what happened next? I remember, I remember, oh, oh, I remember, they were screaming. But who were they? I remember they were screaming. I was wrong. Fire does not solve everything. So, you know, when, when you haven't been feeling yourself lately, and everything seems to be turning to crap, and we're being surrounded by a bunch of fiery skeletons, or hypothetically speaking, it could be anything that's just ruining your day, it feels really good to just let loose and get mad and destroy everything. Even if they did light me on fire, and I came very close to death twice, it's good to be back. I... I just drank seven healing potions. And... I I don't feel very good right now. I I want to I want to sit down a little bit, okay? I'll just sit down on this rock here. Okay. Uh, I'm really tired.